the third one is the bong sao. Bong sao. Again, a lot of people teaching bong sao from here and doing this sort of thing. Put yourself in a real situation and then try and throw a bong sao. You won't do it. You just won't do it, okay? Because it's unrealistic to try and, to try and pull that off. In my opinion, this is just my opinion, okay? So again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use what I know is safe. In a, situa in a, in a street self-defense situation, I've got to do what I know is, is going to work. I've got to do what, what I know is safe. So for me personally, I'm always going to get my hands up here. Don't start with your hands here. A lot of Wing Chun people do this, their hands are down, their arms are crossed, their arms are too low, their head's too high. Because you learn Silum Tao, sorry John, you sit here with your head up, okay? You put yourself in this position in a fight and your chin's wide open, okay? You get into a ring with any boxer and you stand there with your chin up, he'll take your head clean off your shoulders. Okay? So you've got to keep your head down. All right? Keep your head down, keep your hands up, protect your chin. Okay, so in this position I want my hands up, whichever way, it doesn't really matter to us. Okay? And as, he, as he moves in, I'm just going to check and strike. Okay? But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to try and step off and throw a bong sao, and I'm not, certainly not going to try and turn and bong sao and do something like this because John's far too strong for me to do that. It just wouldn't work, okay? So we have to look at, is Bong Sao, this is Bong Sao, if you don't know what Bong Sao is, this is called, this is uh, wing arm, comes from the Wing Chun system, okay? We have to look at the value of this position in a self-defense situation, and also obviously from a training perspective. Again, in my opinion, Bong Sao is a contact technique, and by that I mean I'll only use a bong sao if, if I have a contact on John's arm, okay? If I've got John's hand here, the vulnerability is this area if I'm holding down because of this punch, okay? This punch can come up and through. So what John can do, the fastest way to defend this punch is to use that arm, to lift it. Now he can do it there or he can throw it before a punch and control the arm, which again to me makes more sense. Why would you want to wait for me to punch to throw that bong sao? Why would you want to do that? Yeah? Because bearing in mind, if I know he's going to throw something like that, I'm going to throw a faster punch and try and make you defend him. Okay? So you can train it two ways. From here, if I'm holding him down or, or I'm getting into his hands, I've got hold of his arms in any way, he can throw the elbow over, he can cover that out and stop this hand from working. But you'll also notice that he's still bridging. He needs to use that bridging technique. The second stage of Chun Q is to bridge. He can't just throw a bong sao from there and expect to get away with that because I can still fight from this position. If he moves in, he closes me down. He can start to, to use this to, to pin the arm to stop me from fighting. This hand now, just bring it through, John, is ready to strike. Okay, now you can do this two ways. You can bring the turn into that, okay, and just drive through. So if we take that, do that as a, as a pra way of practicing a technique from here, he's gonna, I'm going I'm to pressure his arms because that's what I would do. I'm not just going to put my hands on because again, I, I wouldn't do that in a situation if I'm going to get hold of him, I'm going to get a hold of him, okay? And I, I want him to work from that position. So I'm going to pressure his arms here, he's going to throw the bong sao, and he's going to turn the punch in. Okay, so that's understanding again the bridging and the turning from the chum cue, but also the bong sao, because in, in chum cue there's a position which we all know where we're throwing the bong sao this way, yeah? And again, this is taught to shrug somebody away, you know? If somebody gets a hold of you, you step through and push away, and you push away. Okay. But the chances of you applying it as a double-handed technique are just almost impossible. What you're going to do is you're going to step forward and you're going to bridge and get to that point. Now, do you want to push somebody away or do you just want to cover yourself so you can hit them with the other hand? And you make your own mind up. But what John's going to do is he's going to come forward, he's going to get to here, and then he's going to slap me with that hand, whichever way it is, a fist or a punch. That's what he's going to do. Okay. So we can drill his chum cue by doing that, by holding him down, making him push in, and then making him turn, okay, and use that, okay, because even if your hand's here, if he puts enough turning force into that, you're not going to stop that punch. Don't think for one minute that in that position, just because I have his hand, that I can control his power, because I can't. It's very, very difficult, okay. I'm going to need to move, okay. So, again, the other side of the coin is to, to look at that and say, well, if, if he's doing that, what is that going to teach me about getting out of those positions. So if you come into there and you, you turn and he's going to strike, it teaches me the vulnerability of where I am. And if I understand that, then I can, I can develop my Wing Chun to be able to get away from that. Okay, so I'll pick it up straight away. As I'm working with John, if he comes in with this technique 
and he's there, I'm, all, I'm already opening this gap. As he steps forward, I'm moving out, because I don't want to be hit with that hand. If he tries to fire that hand now, I'm in a position where I can snatch and strike through, okay? And work it in different ways from a contact position. So you've got to look at your Wing Chun in many different ways. Not just um, from the form, especially taking techniques directly from the form. Okay? The forms are there to teach you principles. They're not there to teach you techniques. I think that's the biggest mistake a lot of Wing Chun, in my opinion, make. Don't take a technique directly from the form. Because you'll probably find that it, it, it may well work against somebody who's playing the game. John step with a nice punch, okay? This works fine. But if he comes in with any sort of anger, I don't want to be there. I want to be moving away and then moving back into him to stop him throwing a second shot. So I want to be absorbing and then going forward. So you're coming back, you, you're stepping away, you're stepping in, and you play that game. It's, it's, it's a little bit different. Take your silum towel. It's about developing energy and good position in the arms, okay? Everybody's pretty much understood that. The biggest problem happens to in my opinion, is the chum cue, the second form, the footwork, understanding the footwork. I see a lot of chum cue people just stepping and doing this. There's no power in what they're doing. If you're going to bridge, you have to bridge. You can't just put your foot there like that. It doesn't work like that. Okay? So you have to train it as you're going to apply it. That's what makes it work. That's what makes Wing Chun work. Okay? Too many people don't do that. They're just looking at the form. Yeah, I know the form. And away they go. One, two, three. Cut in. Cut back, take the sense line, off they go, back onto this one. But they're not putting any application, there's no, there's no intention to what they're doing. And you can see that, okay? If you train it that way, that's, that's what you're going to end up with. A form that is, has no value, basically, okay? You've got to take that, put it into your fighting skills, and make it work. But you won't make the techniques work directly from the form. What you have to do is break it down. The fact that you're throwing a bonsai with a step doesn't mean that you are going to throw a bonsai with a step in application. It's teaching you two things. It's teaching you to step and it's teaching you to throw your hands. Whether it's a pack sail, whether it's a bill sail, whatever it be. But what it's actually doing is teaching the coordination of stepping and using the hands at the same time. Rather than stepping, throw your hand. Or throw your hand, then step. Okay? The timing is you step and apply. You step and apply, and you can use that in every direction possible. The only reason it's done in a straight line in the form is because it keeps the form concentric, okay? So you're not moving all over the place. You're just working up and down. You don't need to. To understand a principle, all you need to do is step. So we step in straight lines. Then we turn around and we go back the other way. It's a basically a drill. So I'm Steve Dye from the Combat Exercise Centre. Thank you for your time.